once a person is saved, there is indeed a process of change that takes place in a person's life. Not in order to be saved, but because we're saved. It's called, and a big long word here, can't stretch along, sanctification. Okay, it's not that long. Sanctification. Sanctify, to be holy. It's a matter of, it's a process of growing into Christ-likeness. Someone put it this way, and you've heard this before, but it bears repeating at this point. When we came to Christ to become a Savior, we were saved from the penalty of sin. The penalty of sin that was upon us. When we came to Christ, we believed, we put aside our unbelief, and we became a born-again Christian, and we are saved from the penalty of sin. We were made members of God's family. We were given the new birth. We were declared righteous, and we were made citizens of heaven. The moment we got saved, the moment we placed our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, that took place. We are saved from the penalty of sin. But secondly, we are being saved from the power of sin day by day. Day by day, as we open the word of God and as we commune with God, uh, we are being saved from sin's power as we grow in the Christian life, in the knowledge of Jesus, so that we can indeed become more like him. I've said this before, in this life, because of the corruption and the flesh and and all the things that we have to deal with, uh, we will never get to the place of sinlessness. Not until we get to heaven will we be sinless. But Christian, did you know that you can sin less? The more we grow, the less we sin. The more, the closer we get to God, the less we're going to want to sin. And those habits and those behaviors and those thoughts will go away as the closer we stay to God and the the closer that we uh, get to his word and walk with him. Did you know you don't have to sin? You choose to. Just saying. You have, I'm getting ahead of myself. No, I'm not. We're right, we're at the right status. We have the Spirit of God living within us. We don't have to sin. We have the power to say no. We have the power to get those thoughts. We have the power to behave right. We have the power to do what is right according to Scripture. That's the status that we have. We've been saved from the power of sin day by day. And of course, one day we will be saved from the very presence of sin when we are in heaven with our Lord. And, and, and every step, uh, the penalty of sin, the, the power of sin, the, the presence of sin, it's all a matter of grace. None of us receive this through our own efforts. It's all the work of God. Every bit of it. So this divine status includes being brought into union with, with him. Scripture declares that the Christian is what? In Christ. What does that mean? Jesus described it this way. I am the vine. You are the branches. You are in me because you're part of the vine as one of the branches. And, and so we are in Christ. Uh, one man put it this way. The penalty of our sins has been paid. The power of death has been broken. And here's what I love this phrase. Uh, uh, because we are one with the Lord Jesus in his death and resurrection. As a result... God cannot condemn us any more than he can condemn his own son. That's being in Christ. Paul writes that we are presently today, right now, seated in heavenly places in Christ Christ Jesus. And so this divine status means that we are in Christ. It, It also means that we are partakers of the divine nature. That word partakers has the idea of of fellowship, of communion of getting along with someone, and it's it's called regeneration. You see, at our first birth, we were all born to our earthly parents. In the second birth, we're born from above by the Holy Spirit, and we entered God's family. And so the divine status means that we today, and since the moment we accepted Christ as Savior, we have the presence of the indwelling Spirit of God. For every child of God here this morning, you have the Spirit of God. There's nothing in Scripture that teaches there is a second blessing in order to receive His presence. No. The Holy Spirit indwells every believer from the very moment he receives Christ as Savior. And so the spiritual reality of our divine status is threefold. We've been made one with Christ. Secondly, we've undergone a spiritual birth. And thirdly, we have the Holy Spirit living in our bodies. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The fact of the matter is, we may not always feel saved. <laughs> we may not even, we, we may not always feel the supernatural character of our salvation. We are still imperfect. We're subject to many failures. But the fact that we have been saved does not change. 
And you and I need to remind ourselves of these truths when Satan would have us doubt the love of God, when he'd have us doubt our salvation, and we wonder if somehow we lost it along the way. Aren't you glad that God saves you and God keeps you saved? You didn't do anything to be saved. You do anything to keep yourself saved. You are in God's hands and nobody shall pluck you out of my father's hand. You're eternally secure and safe in his hands. Yeah, we, we blow it. We're humans. We, we're feet of clay and it's no, no fun. We just get frustrated with ourselves, don't we? When, when we say something or do something or think something. Oh, how can I be a Christian and think that? And that's exactly what the devil wants you to think. But that's where we go back to, wait a minute. I have a divine status here. <laughs> I'm a child of God. I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I'm in, the, I'm in the palm of his hand. He knows who I am. He knows where I am. He knows what I'm going on to. And, and if I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I am a child of God. And get up and move on. And ask God to give you victory over that besetting sin <laughs> that we all, we all have. Well, let's go on to number three. This divine status is a child of God never changes and the Savior will never lose one of his children. And that divine status then enables us, number three, to have divine strength, divine power, it's called there in verse three, according as his divine power. We've been summoned. We've been called. And as a result of answering the call to be saved, we've been given a new status. And now in order to live out this new status... We are blessed with a sufficient supply of, God, supply of God's enabling power and strength. You and I today, yes, even today, we can live joyful, victorious, triumphant lives. Why? Because he's given us most things that we need. He's given us very many things that we need. Ladies and gentlemen, he's given us all things that we need. Everything we need to live a life of godliness. He's given it to us. And we have this divine strength. We can live godly in an ungodly world. We can live righteously when there is unrighteousness all around us. We have his strength, his divine power within us. God does not abandon us the moment you're born again. You and I can be free, listen, from the hopelessness and fear that so many are experiencing today. We don't have to live lives of fear and hopelessness. Why? We have the power of the strength of God within us. Now let's be honest. You have been guaranteed God's power. You have been guaranteed God's strength, but that does not mean that you will be automatically having a, 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 a bulging bank account, robust health, and, uh, or, a, or a famous name. Doesn't mean life is perfect. The fact of the matter is, one can be in the best physical condition of his life. He can be world-renowned. He can have possess, uh, he can possess great riches and still be miserable. But on the other side, if you have the assurance of God's forgiveness of sins, the joy of answered prayer, the, the, the sense of his eternal presence, the experience of his daily guidance, then then you can have the blessing of his divine strength in your life, even in the midst of illness or poverty or anonymity. Why? Because you belong to God, as Anne sang this morning. We belong to, he, you are a child of the king, and we need to live like it. You can live with confidence as you yield to the leading of the Holy Spirit. As you read his word, as you commune with him in prayer, as you are obedient to the commands in his word, you will be able to access that divine power that's desperately needed in the lives of God's children today. You know, I believe that the Lord is grieved when he sees his children stumbling and fumbling along the Christian life. He has made it possible for us to live triumphantly. He brought us into union with Christ. He's given us this new nature and status. He sent the Holy Spirit to live within us. And yet so many Christians today are not overcomers. They're being overcome. The world, the flesh, the devil, they, they are overcomers. And, 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 and I don't mean to be unkind, but they're living like losers. Like they've lost the battle, they lost the war. It's over. I'm down by 20 points with three minutes to go. There's no way we're going to win. Might as well just play to the end and just live 
play the game like a loser. You don't like that. You don't want that. You, you, you want to play to the very end. You want to play hard to the very end. And, and you want to do the very best to the very end. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you, we know the end of the story. God wins. Are you on his side? If so, let's pick up our heads. Let's pick up our walk and start living triumphantly because God has given us the power to do that. He has given us the strength to do that. We can be overcomers, not overcome. As you examine your walk with God on a day-by-day basis, is there evidence that you are indeed living according to his divine power that is given unto all things that pertain to life and godliness? Or are there some real weaknesses in your walk with God? Maybe it's spending time with him. Maybe it's the, the ability to sh- share your faith. Uh, uh, maybe it's your prayer life. Uh, maybe uh, there's other issues in your life and thoughts and, and uh, behaviors and attitudes and habits that you just can't seem to get the victory over. Uh, you have the strength. You can with God's help and the Spirit of God empowering you to do so. Now, the fact of the matter is, as we will see, our salvation is all of God, yes, but... We have a responsibility to cooperate with the Spirit of God to live as God would have us live. I wonder how many spiritually lethargic Christians there are in our world who sit at home and say, okay, God, use me. I'm waiting. No, I might as well get off the remote. Still waiting for God to use me. Where are you, God? God doesn't work that way. You have to get up and start moving. You have to move your feet. You have to get your foot in the water, so to speak. You have to move forward by faith. You can't just sit back and say, well, someone else will do it. or God, God, God will use me when, when he wants. God wants to use you right now today. In some way, in some, in some way he wants to use you. Are, are, are you willing to be used? We have to cooperate with the Spirit of God who's in our life to live the life that he wants us to live. It's not just going to, he's not going to hit us over the head and say, okay, it's your turn. I've used so-and-so enough time. Now it's your turn. it's, It's all of our turns. We all ought to be doing our part to live a life that honors God. Yes, divine salvation is all God's work from start to finish. Biblical salvation is the real thing. It is not counterfeit. It's not an imitation. It's the real thing. And if your salvation, if you're depending on salvation in, 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 in some church or some good works that you've done or some thing that you're trying to do to, to earn favor with God, may, may, I, may I kindly tell you this morning that that's not the real thing. The real thing is understanding that we were sinners, are sinners, born that way. And we do what we do because we are what we are. And because of that sin, there is a penalty We either pay for our own sin for all of eternity in hell or we accept the salvation that comes through Jesus Christ who took our payment for us. He went to the cross. He paid the sin. He paid the debt that you and I could not pay. And so it's not a matter of what I do for him. It's what he's already done for me. Have you put your faith, your trust in Jesus Christ? Have you obeyed the call, the summons? He may be calling you this morning. Maybe you're home watching and God is calling you. Won't you come to him? Understand that faith is what is necessary for a person to come to Christ, believing that who he is and what he's done. Christian, are you living out that divine status in the power of the Spirit of God? Or are you one of those fumbling, stumbling Christians who just can't seem to grow and can't seem to overcome this habit or that thought life or that besetting sin that just really frustrates you. Oh, may God help you to understand you have the Holy Spirit living within you. You can overcome, but you must cooperate with the Spirit of God. And when he says this needs to be changed, you change it. And you need to do this, and then we do it. We just need to be obedient to the Spirit of God so that we can indeed enjoy this divine salvation that only comes through a relationship with Jesus Christ. So that he gets all the glory in and through our lives day by day. Would you bow your heads with me this morning? Our Father, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you that though this was written so many years ago to a group of people half a world away from us. 
We are grateful that by the Spirit of God, the inspiration of God, the preservation of his word, this letter that Peter wrote was in our Bible for us today, and we can learn from it today. And we thank you for the wonderful salvation that we have through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that we don't have to depend on our good works and our church attendance or anything that we've done. We can depend on you alone. Thank you for the spirit that you give us to, to empower us to live a life that honors you. Holy Spirit of God, we, we need you this morning. Holy Spirit, work in our hearts and, and, and convict us and show us our need. Perhaps there's some here this morning who have not yet put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Young or old, all of us need to know that we are indeed born again children of God. And then we need to understand what it means to have that wonderful status of the divine nature. To live it out day by day in his strength and in his power. We thank you, Lord, for bringing each one here this morning. We pray your blessing upon the final song. And as we're dismissed, Lord, may your will be done in our lives, we pray. Just before I close my prayer, when we stand and sing a final song, let me just ask a question or two. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. No one's looking around, and the only reason I am is so that I might pray for you as you have a need. And, and perhaps the first need is you're here this morning and you know all about this matter of salvation and Jesus dying on the cross, but you, you've never really personally put it in your heart, your mind. You've never repented of, of sin and accepted Christ as Savior. You're depending on something else and something you've done, but never have repented of sin and trusted Jesus Christ. You say, Pastor, I think I'm saved. I hope I'm saved. But I'll be honest, after this message about salvation, I don't know for sure. I'm not sure. I, I, would you pray for me that I might truly understand what it means to become a child of God through faith alone in Jesus Christ? Anybody like that this morning? Raise your hand. I'll pray for you. I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to embarrass you. Doesn't mean you're joining the church or anything. I just want to pray for you that you'll understand what it means to be a child of God through faith alone in what Jesus did on the cross. Anybody like that this morning? Hand up, right back down. How many Christians this morning, by God's grace, you remember a time when you were a, became a born-again Christian? You, you, you can point to the time when I put my faith, my trust in Jesus Christ. And you would say, I know I'm saved, but I'm not accessing the power that I ought to. There's issues in my life that I'm just really struggling with. And by God's grace, I need to, I need to access that power. I know I have the new nature. I just need to have that power in my life to overcome these besetting sins or thoughts or habits that just really get me down and frustrated and discouraged. I don't want to be one of those stumbling Christians. I want to be victorious. If that's you this morning, I'd pray for you too. If you raise your hand, let me know how I can pray for you. Anybody like that this morning? Christian, God bless you. Yes, God bless you. Amen, God bless you. Amen, bless you back there. Thank you. Anybody else? Pastor, pray for me. Whether it's being a witness at work or reading my Bible or communing with God in prayer, there, there's some things that I'm just not doing as I ought to. And I, am, I, I need God's help and his power in my life to do what I ought to do and to be what I ought to be. Anybody else I might pray for this morning? Anybody else? Our Father, you've seen the hands and you know the hearts. There may be some here who not yet are born again Christians. And they're trusting in something else. But Lord, I pray that you know the hearts and that you will do the work that I, I dare not do. I don't want to do. Holy Spirit, you do the work. And if there's some here that yet need to be saved, may they still come and get that matter settled this morning. Christians who raise their hands, maybe some just need to come and humble themselves and ask for God's help to overcome the habit, the, the sinful condition, whatever the thoughts, whatever's going on in their heart this morning. Maybe they just need to come and say, oh God, help me to be a Christian that understands my status and will live in the strength and the power of God. To your honor and glory. In Jesus' name. Would you stand with me, please? In your songbooks, page 319, familiar hymn, we sing it often at invitation time. It's called Just As I Am. And as we sing this morning, 
If you're here and you do not know Christ as your Savior, I would invite you to come and let someone take a Bible. Take a Bible. This is truth. The real thing. Let someone take a Bible and show you how you can know for sure you're on your way to heaven. Or perhaps you're saved, but just not really walking as close to God as you ought to. Maybe you just need to come and kneel and say, Lord, I need to be in your word more. I need to pray more. I need to witness more. Whatever it is, you know. You got that thing going on in your life that's just really struggling. Ask God to give you the ability to say no to the devil and yes to God and the spirit of God. Whatever the need is. Membership. Baptism by immersion. Whatever the need is that you have, as we sing on that first standard, just as I am, I encourage you, put the book down, come. Let us help you this morning. Or come, pray, whatever God would have you to do. On that first stanza, please. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. Why don't you come this morning? Sing the next verse, please. What would God have you do? It's between you and God. away with your heads bowed let the instruments just play through a verse time is open with your heads what would God have you do tonight this morning just ask the spirit of God to work in your heart as the song is played this morning Father, we thank you for the privilege we've had to be in the house of God this evening, for these who are here and assembled. We thank you for our guests and visitors that are with us and our faithful members. Lord, continue to work in our hearts through this message. Help us to go out of here this morning rejoicing that God is true, that God wants the best for our lives, and he has given us his spirit to live within us, to live a life that honors him. And thank you for the new status that we have as a result of answering that call. And if there's still yet one here that has not answered the call to be saved, oh, Father, I pray, call, convict, and draw them unto yourself. Thank you again for this time this morning. Give us a wonderful afternoon. Bless our service tonight and the Lord's Supper, communion time. Uh, We pray that your blessing will be upon this church as we continue to serve you faithfully in this area. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. But just before you dismiss, let me say thank you for coming. Uh, my wife is out at the um, uh, Welcome Center. And if you're visiting with us this morning, we want to say thank you for coming. We have a gift we'd like to give to you. So stop by the Welcome Center and see her. And if you are heading to the uh, uh, Sweetheart Banquet, which takes place this coming Saturday, you signed up, haven't secured your tickets yet, please see my wife and she'll get you all signed up for the uh, banquet on Saturday as well. Uh, regular service uh, tonight at 6 o'clock. Except that uh, it's the first Sunday of the month, and so we'll be observing the Lord's Supper. So I hope you'll be here for our evening service as well. 
a ladies' Bible study on Tuesday, prayer meeting on Wednesday, all sorts of good things. Uh, please, deacons, be aware of our deacon meeting on Thursday, not Friday, Thursday deacon meeting, and then, of course, the banquet on, on uh, Saturday. Um, if you'd like to be a blessing to our missionaries and pray for a particular missionary or two, please see Diane Ward. She's at the table just as you leave the foyer and uh, select the missionary that you'd like to pray for during the year. She'll put the recent update, a prayer list, a prayer letter in your box out there. And uh, so you can pray more intelligently and uh, pray, uh, see Diane if you have any questions about that. Uh, thank you for those who have given to our uh, mug uh, collection. That's the gift that we give to everybody. And uh, so now that you're a visitor, you know what you're getting. Uh, but it's a really cool one. So stop by and get one. Anyways, we need to order some more since we're out of, out of uh, stock, so to speak. But uh, that's a blessing. If you'd like to participate, please, uh, please do so. Thank you so much for your faithfulness to the house of God this morning. And uh, thank you so much for coming. Have a wonderful rest of your afternoon, and we will see you tonight, Lord willing. God bless you. We're dismissed. Mm -hmm.